Hi everyone, it's Bernadette Bowes. Welcome to your master class on how to achieve riches in your career, business, and life. Now we have a jam-packed hour together, so I want you to do two things for yourself. I want you to one, get a pen and a journal or a notebook so you can take a lot of notes, not a loose piece of paper that you're gonna easily discard. Secondly, I'd like you to close down, shut off, or even close whatever it is that you might be working on, such as your email, your voicemail, your social sites, or even the door of the office or the room that you're sitting in, all right? This is your hour, and I want you to be sure that you have all the focus on really thinking about what it is that you want. All right, so what we're gonna discuss is we are gonna walk through the challenges and the pains and the questions women just like you are asking each and every day across all aspects of their lives. Then I'm gonna walk you through my proven five-step shift to riches formula, which I've been coaching, training, and speaking on for both corporate and entrepreneurial clients in the last eight years. And lastly, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to create your very own shift to rich plan. How does that sound? All right, so as I mentioned, for the past eight years, I have been coaching, training, and speaking on stages to corporate and entrepreneurial organizations, associations, uh, conferences, and of course, out of that, I have my own individual clients. And one of the most popular, I'll call it, question that they always come to me with is, Bernadette, why are some people more successful than others? Well, immediately, the coach in me, says, okay, I need to ask more questions in order to understand what is really kind of laying under that question. So the next question I would immediately ask is, how do you define success? What do you mean by that? Who are you judging or comparing yourself to or, or setting expectations for yourself based on? Having that understanding will give me a good understanding of not only the tips and advice that I can provide them, but also getting down to really what it is that they're asking. Because it often leads, especially ladies for you, it often leads to women challenging and asking themselves, why am I not where I expect it to be? Again, my first question would follow with, where did you expect to be? What have you done toward that expectation? What have you not done? What worked for you? What didn't work for you? Again, there really, there's another question and maybe multiple questions underlying that initial potential pain or challenge or struggle that they're feeling. Lastly, and raise your hand if you can relate to this, they're often asking, especially women trying to juggle various aspects, if not all aspects of their life. And that is, why is it some people can get done everything they need to get done in a 24-hour time period, and I always seem to be struggling. I always seem to be juggling. I always seem to be running on an endless treadmill. How is it they're able to look as if everything comes so easily to them, and they're achieving their goals and their objectives for themselves, but I can't seem to move forward. I can't seem to get unstuck. I can't seem to get out of my own way. Can you relate? But Ultimately, what I really glean out of these discussions and out of the coaching work that I do with them is that ultimately, they're all asking the same question, and that is, Bernadette, what do I need to do differently? What do I need to do new? What changes do I need to make in order for me to be able to achieve the riches that I want out of all aspects of my life? And right there tells me a great deal. It tells me if you're asking that same question, it tells me you're certainly not where you want to be. You're certainly struggling with whatever you might have currently in your life and what you want in your life. And you don't have a plan in order to, to get there. And you don't have the tools or the techniques in order to push through any of the highs and lows that life will bring each and every one of us, right? So what I often will do is, if like this program, if stick with me, and I can definitely provide you some of insights, 
some lessons learned and some guidance into answering that question for yourself and getting you to a point where there's not as much struggle, not in a, 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 as much pain, no longer the challenge of going after what it is that you want to achieve. That's what I want out of this program for you. That is what I want out of everything that you do for yourself is do whatever you need to do to get out of your own way and to create the aspirations and the ambitions and the goals that you have for yourself. And then just do what you can to pursue them and get the results, get the success and get the riches that you absolutely deserve to have. But let me tell you a little bit about myself first before we get into the actual formula of uh, what we're going to discuss today. I joke with friends, I'll often say, you know, I was born into corporate. And they'll look at me very strangely and I'll say, well, I'm one of 12 children at a Philadelphia PA originally. And I have six brothers and five sisters. And my parents, before both of them passed over the last 10 years, my mother just a few years ago, um, my parents pretty much raised us as if, and operated our family actually, as if we were a business or a corporation. My dad was a corporate executive for a long time before he then went off on his own as an entrepreneur. And he definitely brought his business acumen, his business practices into the family because how else can you manage and plan and budget and motivate and coach 12 children. So I took that, I took that kind of that upbringing and I was fortunate enough to find myself in a corporate job even before I graduated from college. And so I spent most of my career, 25 years of it, in retail and technology and at every rung of what people call the corporate ladder. I was a um, retail buyer. I was a vice president of professional services. I was a consulting partner. I was a global chief knowledge officer for a technology company responsible for all the processes, all the procedures, all the systems for our 2,500 professional services consultants. So when I say I get and understand the ins and outs of corporate, I get the challenges of corporate, I get the politics of corporate, I get the struggle that people have within corporate, um, I'm dead serious that I do. Add to that that I am a female in especially retail and technology, which can be very heavily male dominated. So ladies, if you have ambitions and if you have aspirations, if you have a corporate ladder that you want to climb or you want to, if you're not already, step out on your own and have your own business, your own enterprise, so to speak, then I definitely know where you're coming from. However, what I want to share with you is the greatest lesson while at the same time, the greatest kick in the butt that I received out of that 25 year corporate career. And that is on November 26, 2007, following a glorious long Thanksgiving day weekend and running into work all excited about the holidays and all excited about the projects I was closing out for the year and what's ahead. By 8.05 that morning, long before anyone else was in the office, I found myself standing in the middle of a parking lot with a pink slip in my hand. Now, as you can imagine, I was upset. I was angry. I was feeling a great bit of betrayal. And yet at the same time, I was really just very confused. How was I standing in that middle of that parking lot, having lost my 25 year career, my corporate identity, my overall personal identity, and all I had to show with, for it was this single box of my personal possessions, 25 years. And more importantly was that my mentor and boss of 12 years was 
figuratively speaking, holding the door open for me as I was leaving and exiting my corporate career without fighting, without justification. And I just stood there in the middle of that parking lot, totally confused. But I was clear on one thing, I needed to figure it out. Obviously, something, I went astray somewhere along the line. I must have lost myself somewhere to where I was pretty much, I was jobless, I was careerless, I was feeling lifeless, if you can ever relate to that in your own way, regardless if it's you being fired or not. So I kind of went on my own personal journey, my own personal retreat of sorts. And I just started asking myself really hard, painful, shameful, difficult questions. I started asking myself, all right, Bernadette, who are you? How is it you are without your career that you kind of relished in? And it wasn't for lack of successes, awards, big titles, big positions, big offices, something, somehow I kind of went, went astray. So I asked myself, who am I? And who do I want to be? Reflecting back on who I was even as a child all the way through my corporate career. And then that was helping me to understand who I didn't want to be. And at the same time, learning that the woman I had become was definitely someone that I wouldn't want to be. And what do I really want? Some people, a lot of people, had said, Bernadette, you have an opportunity to create whatever you want now and do whatever you want now. But quite honestly, you know, you may feel, you know, the, the feeling of being trapped. I wasn't trapped in my career, I loved it. I was certainly trapped in who I was at the time. And so I really needed to understand what I truly wanted out of this one life that I knew I had to live and it goes really, really fast. And I knew it couldn't be who I was at that moment in time or I wouldn't be standing there in the middle of a parking lot, right? And what I started discovering sent me literally to my knees. I started realizing, looking through my career from the moment I started working all the way to the, that day I was let go, while I was also looking at my personal and social life to really understand kind of what I was obviously missing or not paying attention to or totally ignoring or actually suppressing. And that was painful, angst, negativity insecurity, not feeling good enough, not feeling deserving enough. Can any of you relate to this? I felt as if I was a fraud that sooner or later someone was going to figure out that I wasn't as smart or talented or um, competent as I let on. And I didn't necessarily deserve those promotions and those advancements and those big salaries and all the responsibility that came along with it. And as I was discovering these pains, I was realizing that it was all of this junk that was causing me to lash out in such a way that all you could call it was as a bitch. You can call it a corporate tyrant. You can call it a bully. You can give it any name that you want, but I had to acknowledge and confront the fact that all of those negative emotions I felt about myself, those limiting beliefs, those, that mindset I had was causing me to project out into the world a great deal of ugliness, a great deal of um, um, selfishness, a great deal of disconnect from anyone around me, a great deal of needing to control everything and everyone around me. And at the same time, being very aggressive, very competitive, very desperate to make sure I was sitting at that table, not because it was just an aspiration, but more so because I felt that it was my right 
and to be able to lean in and ask for those promotions and get those raises. It wasn't out of um, true leadership, as I'll call it. It was more so out of a feeling of desperation and lack and needing to control. And it just projected itself and ended itself in such a way that even my 12-year mentor and boss could no longer support or advocate or defend that type of leader, if you call it that. So I needed to do some work. I needed to find something new, something different. I needed to change. I needed to shift. I needed to be someone that I wasn't at that moment in time. Because if I didn't, I wasn't going to be able to ever find true success, true riches that I desperately wanted. So I did. I started doing a lot of work and started recognizing what my, what I call bitches are all those negative insecurities, negativities, uh, fear, doubt, uh, feelings of low self-worth. I had to give them a name such as that because I realized that that term is not to or shouldn't be used to define a personality. It really should be used to define the emotions that cause someone to lash out in their life. And so I was determined that I was going to shed myself of those things because I want it so much more. I realized that I wanted to connect with people. I wanted to build relationships. I wanted them to see me. I wanted to have a successful business that people wanted to be part of. I wanted them to like, know, and trust me in order to be able to really serve my friends, my family, my clients, my employees, anyone that I came into contact with. I no longer was consumed with what they thought of me. I just wanted to really be able to be a true leader that corporate for 25 years expected. Whether or not I went back to corporate or not, I knew that in any aspect of life, true leadership is very different than a title. And it's very different than the office space that you have. So as I started really shifting to joy or what I'll call shifting to riches, I was opening up so many opportunities and adventures for myself. And I was opening up so many new ideas and new aspirations. And I was really finding for the first time in 25, 26 years who I truly was. And that was worth every bit of the, high, the lows and the highs for me. And it allowed me to start a new world. I realized people started coming to me saying, Bernadette, I really understand your struggle and your shift, so to speak, but not as it pertains to corporate or even to business. And I would immediately say, well, what do you mean? And they said, well, you know, when I was diagnosed with cancer or when I got divorced or when I broke up with my partner or when I decided to come out of the closet or when I uh, decided that I wanted to start my own business, all of these fears and insecurities and doubts and negativities, all of that started creeping into my soul and lashing out and projecting out in ways that I didn't like about myself. And I too realized that unless I let all that go and stop feeling like a victim or stop feeling trapped or stop feeling um, negative or shameful, that I was never going to be able to move on. So I thought to myself, okay, I need to take this story, take this message, take all the lessons learned and the best practices, and I need to expand it out to a greater audience. So I started my radio show, which on a weekly basis, every Tuesday, we talk about top of mind issues that impact women in all aspects of their life. And that led me to coaching, to consulting, to the training, to the speaking I do. And I landed up starting multiple businesses from both a um, coaching and consulting perspective, but also the media that I was developing because I've since translated my, my book into a full feature screenplay. 
So the reason why I share that with you is because I want you to understand that whatever pains you might be dealing with, you can shift into your own joy and obtain the riches that you want. But the greatest lesson, the greatest lesson that I really learned, and maybe you can relate to this too, is that no matter how skilled, how smart, how expert, how experienced, how well-traveled, how connected you are, none of that ultimately matters. Just like it didn't matter for me and I landed up in that parking lot. It doesn't matter. Sooner or later, you only relying on that skill or that talent or the people that you know in your social circle, only until you realize that that is no longer enough will you really be convinced that you need far more than skills and talent in order to really succeed, in order to really get the results you want, in order to really obtain the riches that you want. And what you really need is you need, I needed, and I learned that my limiting beliefs, my negative mindset, my ugly self-talk, my attitude toward the world, my projection of my junk into the world was creating exactly what, what I was putting out. So if you believe in, this, in the secret or are a student of it or law of attraction and the whole concept of what you put out in the world comes back to you, that was my greatest lesson. That was my greatest lesson. And for many of you professional women who um, don't get all the woo-woo, as I call it, about personal development, about mindset, about law of attraction, belief systems, I'm here to tell you as hard-nosed and shut off, so to speak, that I was, and as corporate as I'll call it, no, no offense against corporate, as I was, I realized that until I let those barriers and those walls and those masks and that victimhood, let, I let it all go, and I really started focusing on how I went out in the world, how I was projecting myself, how I was communicating, I, I would have never been able to say that that would be make such a difference in my life and yet it has and so my lesson greatest lesson was it's not about the skill set it is all about the mindset so if you are dealing with any of those kinds of pains if you're dealing with feeling stuck or insecure or desperate or negative or unsure of yourself or you feel like you lack something, you really need to think about the impact it's having on your life. Or if you want to look at the impact that's, that, that is going on in your world and back into the pains, you can certainly ask yourself, why am I not willing to ask for what I believe I deserve? Why am I willing not to go and pursue that promotion or that raise or that relationship? Why am I always making bad decisions or lashing out on people? Or why do I feel trapped? Whether or not that's in your job, whether or not that's in a business, whether or not that's in a relationship, whether or not that's in a community. If, if you haven't been acknowledging the pain, then look at the impact and back into the pain. Because if you're not doing those things, then it's a whole different scenario. But if you are doing those things, if you are kind of hiding from really stepping in or leaning in or taking the seat at your table uh, or, you know, asking for what it is you deserve, there's underlying reasons for it. And you can fill in the blank, but what you really want to do is discover what that is so you can work through it. And we're going to give you an opportunity to kind of understand how you can work through it very easily, though it won't come without discomfort. Because what we want to get to, what we want you to experience, feel, think, and then achieve is all the greatness of who you are, all the riches that life has to offer, and, and find you those joys of being confident and strong and bold and and clear about what it is that you want and focused and positive about life 
and intentional about what it is that you're doing. And then as a result of all those joys, you know, because you've experienced joy before in your life at some point, and you know that when you are confident, when you are feeling good in your own skin, in that business suit of yours, you know that all of a sudden you don't question whether or not you're going to ask for that promotion, that raise, that higher product or service rate, or you're not, you're not going to be afraid to lean in and take that seat at the table with other uh, colleagues, if not um, higher up, so to speak. You're going to take the risk that you're not taking today. And ladies, you're going to say no when you mean no, as opposed to feeling as if you have to please everyone, as opposed to you don't want to disappoint everyone and saying yes all the time, you are going to gain your confidence and your strength and your clarity around the fact that, you know, it's in my best interest to say no. And you're going to find yourself giving and serving in ways that you've never imagined. Trust me when I tell you, I fully, fully um, get this. And I not only promise you that it would happen, but I will guarantee you that that will happen. And you will start ticking off the achievements and the accomplishments and the results and the success toward whatever it is that you want to pursue in this one life you have to live that goes really, really fast. So, what we're going to do for the rest of the session is I'm going to give you an opportunity to create your very own shift to riches plan. And we're going to do that by walking through the formula that I discovered through my own journey. It became very obvious to me as I continue to look back through my growth, I'll call it, that there were definitely phases or stages that I went through very iterative, meaning, you know, they can kind of be circular and go back and before you go forward and then you go forward and you keep going forward and it sends you back. And I'll explain that more. But I found immediately as I was going through my own journey that I was gaining a sense of control, a good one, <laughs> focus, clarity, confidence, determination. I wanted to keep moving despite Every day, not every day, but things will come up, things will go down. And, I, and as I was getting the results and I was achieving the successes, I just wanted to keep moving forward. And that's what I want for you. So here are the stages of the Shift to Riches formula, discover, confront, shed, create, and accelerate. And I will tell you that there are hundreds of questions and tools and tips and worksheets and assessments and other things that... I have within each of these stages to support my clients and whatever it is that they're going through. And we're going to touch on each of these phases, obviously not at that great depth, but it'll get you a great foundation for your own very own shift to rich plan. Now, this is when you need that pen and journal if you haven't already been taking notes. And we have a ton of tips for you coming as well. So uh, grab your pen and journal and we will dig in. So in the discover phase, we kind of go back to that initial struggle or pain that a lot of women that come to me have. And I want you to not have that struggle. So I want you to define for yourself what riches means to you. What does success look like? Riches isn't all, only quantitative, though it can be. Um, it is also it could be your joy, it could be your contentment, it could be your emotional state, as well as any type of tangible or intangible uh, thing that you may want to have or obtain in your life. So what does success or riches look like for you? This is important to understand for yourself because just like the question and the struggle, if you don't know what you really are aspiring to achieve and why, which we're going to get into both of those, then you're always going to be comparing yourself or judging yourself or setting expectations. That might not be truly you. All right. Now, another thing I want you to do for me as you uh, go through this uh, formula and as you develop your shift to riches plan is I want you to not overanalyze, 
not edit, not judge, not critique any of the responses, whether it's physical or mental or emotional that comes up for you when you start answering these questions for yourself. Because ladies, I know a lot of you don't spend a lot of focused time on thinking about you. You feel guilty, you feel selfish, and you know you feel as if you don't have the right to really only think about yourself. And that's all I want you to do today. In this session, all I want you to do is think about what it is you want. Because you also know that if you take care of yourself and you make yourself the best woman that you can be in all aspects of your life, then everyone wins around you. All right? So those two things. Now, as far as not editing and critiquing and judging, I also want you to consider that truth sits on the surface, as I say, which means that the very first thing that comes up for you is most likely your truth, whether or not you ignore it or feel uncomfortable admitting it or you, you know, push it back where it came from. Oh, and that could be a thought, that could be an idea, that could be an emotion, that could be a physical transformation. I want you to pay attention to those. I want you to recognize them, acknowledge them, and I want you to write them down in your journal or your notebook. Fair enough? All right. So what does riches or success look like to you? And then I want you to think about if you had all the money and the resources and the employees and the opportunities in the world, what one goal do you have for yourself? Whether at work, in your business, at home, in your community, it doesn't matter. What is the one goal that if you had everything you needed and you know the only thing that you could do is succeed, what would that one goal be? And I want you to scribble that down as well. And then I need you to really think about why. And this is where a great deal of my clients get stuck. They don't really understand why. So let me give you an example of what it is and isn't. So let's use three examples. You're looking for an advancement, you're looking for a raise, or you're looking to lose weight. All right, what it isn't, your why on the advancement, it isn't for a bigger office, a bigger role, a bigger um, degree of responsibility. For your um, raise, it isn't so you can pay your bills. And for the losing weight, it's not for you to fit into your skinny jeans. What your why is, that thing is, that is going to allow you to fight the fight and push through the pain and achieve and relish in the rewards and the riches, it's going to be more like for that advancement, it's going to be more that you want to be put in a position where you can influence change. You want to be an example for young girls. You want to be able to extend your network so you can really make a different difference and leave a legacy in the world. For your raise, it isn't to pay the bills, it's to provide for your family. It's to um, be able to be stable and secure and have freedom to do what you wanna do in your life. And for the weight, it's not to fit in the skinny jeans, ladies, it's to be here for your children and for your spouse, partner, lover, and it's to have a fit, healthy, active life. Those are the whys that I want you to really pound out of yourself if, it ha if you have to. So let me walk you through as you're thinking through these three questions, kind of my discover. I plainly discovered that my definition of riches certainly had changed where it was power, prosperity, and position before, very materialistic, very uh, egotistical. Uh, it had changed to and it evolved to, I wanted contentment, stability, security, connections, engagement, relationships, intimacy. It became everything that I wasn't before. And it was thrilling. And my goal was to find and continue to do the work to discover the real me and, and be happy and loving in that body and in that spirit and in that me. And then my why was because I did not want to live this one life hiding behind masks and walls and fear and insecurity. I didn't want that. 
So that why in itself has, for the past eight years, has made me joyfully push through the pain, celebrate the highs, go after my dreams, deal with challenges. And not to say that I haven't had lonely or crying bouts of uh, fear, I certainly have, but always keeping my why in mind has always allowed me to continue forward and to continue pushing. And that's what I want for you. So then you're going to start confronting as you're discovering what it is you want, why you want it, and what riches and success means to you, you're going to want to really start confronting kind of both sides of yourself. And I always start with the riches, the personal riches, the embedded riches. And I do this because I want you to ground yourself in all the wonder of you, all the beauty of you, all the riches of you so you can hang on to that while you're pushing and kind of shifting yourself forward and going after the new and the different and the change that you want in your life. So your riches are your personal qualities, traits, values that you really love about yourself that really make you feel confident, even if it's, you know, not necessarily full time. What makes you feel sexy? When do you, do, when do you feel that? What makes you feel uh, emboldened? When, what happens when uh, you just really feel like you? What are those things? Now, the riches you can also discuss is if you're going to be making major shifts and changes, what resources, what monies, what uh, support system, what connections do you have that too are all positives toward your goals and your objectives because we all need these riches in all aspects of our lives in order to fight the fight, so to speak. All right, so what are yours? Now, this is definitely when, when it gets real and when you really have to st start confronting some challenging things sometimes. I certainly had to. What or whom is holding you back? preventing you from being who you want to be, preventing you from moving forward and asking and leaning in and taking the seed and getting the promotion or the advancement or the raise or going out on your own or finding that relationship or having kids or having it all. Who is telling you you can't? Who is holding you down? Who's telling you you're not good enough or you're not deserving enough? What is and it could be a location, it could be a situation, it could be an environment. What is holding you from being able to move forward? Think through those things because most likely if you're not where you want to be and you're asking those questions we discussed at the beginning of the session and you're wondering why are other people successful and you don't feel you are and you're not where you want to be, it's because there's something, even if it's you, holding you back. So what are they? And again, taking my story, you can use them to really identify just what changes, what nudeness, what difference you need in your life in order to be able to obtain your riches. And lastly, I would need you to start painting the picture for yourself in writing. You could do a vision board, doesn't matter. What would your life look like when you achieve your goals? You really want to think about that. I'm a daydreamer. I'm a storyteller, I'm a visionary, if you want to call it, and I picture kind of my end goal, achieving whatever it is I've set out to do and what that feels like, tastes like, looks like, and I even consider everyone else around me because I truly believe that you have to look forward and relish and feel and live in that result, live in that achievement in order for you to be comfortable, in order for you to be, to be uh, committed to that why, to that goal, to that definition of riches that you have for yourself. So for me, the confront phase was hard. It was painful. It was shameful. Discovering the nasty woman that I was certainly, literally sent me to my knees, but certainly made me contemplate how do I explain? How do I apologize? How do I take accountability? because I knew I had to do those things before I was gonna be able to shift. I owed that to, if not specific people, to the world in general. And that's why I wrote the book 
intending that I would self-publish it, make a hundred copies, send it to people, and simply say, I'm sorry, uh, I hope this explains. And yet, like I mentioned, as the story started relating to so many other people, it kind of evolved from there and has provided a great tool, a great guide to many people. And I realized that my life at the end of all of that would be so much fuller and so much richer. And I pictured myself not as a New York Times bestseller. I didn't, that wasn't my intention, my goal, my aspiration at all. It was more so I was going to now be able to influence others in a very positive way. So I used that picture of my, what my life would look like along with my why, along with my goal to continue and kind of be here today sharing this with you. So now as you discover and you confront, you're shedding and wanting to shed some things, recognizing that, you know, with change, with difference, with new, there's some things that you have to sacrifice and compromise on. If you want that advancement, you're going to be sacrificing time at home, time with the kids, time to go to the baseball games, your weekends, uh, maybe even where you live or who you hang out with or who you socialize with. You might have to compromise on who's going to, um, who's going to take care of the kids or the house or the family members, or you're going to compromise on the fact that, all right, if I'm working six days a week, then I at least need to have a seventh day, whatever the case might be, at your work, in your own business, if that's the case, or even at home, there's sacrifice and compromises. And of course, you know, when you're losing the weight, uh, you're going to be sacrificing and compromising on uh, the food you eat and the places you go and the fact that you have to get to the gym and give up your time in bed or time you know, in the evening. So there are sacrifices and compromises. What are you willing to sacrifice or compromise in order for you to achieve your goal? And again, we're going to go and go back all the time and think about, we identified the what or whom is holding you back and preventing you from achieving your goals. It's now time to make decisions about them. It's now time to say, all right, I need to either redefine our relationships, redefine the location that I'm in, redefine the situations I get myself in, or I need to completely let them go or move or, um, or you know, go out and seek out other opportunities, other hobbies, other locations, other places that you hang out, other things. What or whom do you need to shed from your life? Now, you might have identified a number of things back during the discovery and confront phase, but you're not ready. You're not comfortable. You don't know how that's going to happen when it comes to the shedding phase. But you just want to acknowledge it and recognize that as you move forward and you're changing and growing and finding new and different, that those sheds that you need to make will actually become easier if they don't also take care of themselves in regards to as you move on, relationships move on, locations move on, jobs move on, bosses move on. But you have to start thinking about it and preparing for it and then be willing to execute on it in order for you to move forward. Now, my shedding process consisted of definitely uh, acknowledging, confronting in the previous stage that there were definitely people and places that were holding me down. I found that even my 20 year friendship was very toxic, was very un serving to me was not good for me at all. And therefore I had to decide to move on. I physically moved from a city, a location, a house that was also just toxic and not serving me well at all. And I knew that unless I actually changed locations that I was just going to stay down and I was going to feel trapped um, going forward. And I did not want that anymore. So there was definitely people, places, things that I needed, needed to give up. And I even found myself on my own couch for a year with no friends, no social circle. 
And yet I was never lonely. I was alone, but I was the happiest alone that I've ever been because I was actually feeling good about myself, feeling confident, feeling bold, feeling me. And all of those other things just would suck all the energy from me. And therefore, now without those things in my life, those people in my life, those places in my life, I was able to breathe and just enjoy being present, so to speak. Can you relate to that? So what or whom do you need to shed out of your life? And as a result of learning so much through just the three stages that we've been through, what three things can you do right now? So of your why, of your goal, of your definition of riches, of your thinking through what's holding you back and even acknowledging whether or not you need to shed them from your life. What of all those things, what one to three things are you willing to do right now to move yourself forward in your goal and in your dreams? And trust me when I say, as you do that, as you discover the things that you love about yourself, that you want a little bit different, that you uh, now want to be having in your life, you're going to want to start creating and accelerating all that goodness. And so one thing I need you to be thinking about is how will you handle it? How will you handle that success that you defined earlier? Not only in the definition of riches and success, but what your world is going to look like when you achieve your goal. And now you might be sitting in it. As you've gone through Discover, Confront, and Shed, and now you're creating you might be sitting in successes and achievements and riches and you need to know, are you going to be comfortable? Are you going to be uncomfortable? As, as you change and everything around you starts to change, are you okay with that? Are you willing to redefine your world because you want so badly to achieve that goal because of that why that you had defined? How will you handle success? So if you think about it, uh, in corporate, as managers get promoted to much higher executive roles, a lot of times they fail because they're not ready to be that leader. Or maybe they're totally incapable. Or if you obtain more money, think of the lottery. People haven't addressed their limiting beliefs. They haven't addressed their spending and budgeting disciplines and habits or lack thereof. And therefore, they go right back to the level of income they had prior to that lottery win. Think about yourself. When all of a sudden you get a windfall, do you rush out and spend it? Maybe you even spend your paycheck all the time because you're not or you haven't addressed your limiting beliefs around money. And then that weight, we see it all the time. People lose a great deal of weight, but because they didn't address their bitches, so to speak, their pains of what got them overweight in the first place, they go right back to putting on the weight. And what this shift to riches formula is providing you is a way for you to leverage it in such a way that you push through those pains. You shed them once and for all out of your life. And or if you don't shed them once and for all, you have tools and tips and resources and support for you to be able to kind of reshed them rediscover them, reconfront them, and continue using that process, using that formula in order for you to be able to create and accelerate. But how will you handle it when you start getting success? And what will you want to do next? What will you want to do next now that you are feeling success, so to speak? You're achieving, you're accomplishing, you're getting the results that you want, maybe even more results than you expected and you're obtaining those riches, tangible and intangible, what would you want to do next? For me, certainly, if you had told me, if you had told me four years ago that I would have taken this book, turned it into a radio show, and then write a screenplay about it, you, I would have thought you were nuts. And yet, as I started opening up and my world started opening up, it wasn't a big deal for me to say, you know what? I'm going to go and write a screenplay. I'm going to go and write and start a coaching consulting practice that's really going to transform lives. I wasn't afraid to make those claims because I felt confident that I had a tool, I had a process that would help me through and, and be 
kind of a, a, a major instrument in what I use on a regular basis to continue my pursuit of the goals that I wanted for myself. And who are you willing to teach? You know, ladies, when we learn of a good thing, we want to kind of tell everybody about it. And that's what I would want for you. As you're gaining, as you're changing, as you're getting new and different, and as you're shifting toward what it is that you want, you'll want to start sharing and teaching and training. And whether it's in your social life, in your family life, or at work, go for it. You can even share all the materials I provide you. Because if we all can have those successes and those accomplishments and those joys in our lives, then why not allow others to do it as well? So bottom line, ladies, I just want you to do the work, feel the pain, feel the discomfort, feel the change, the new, the difference, be willing to do what's needed to shift and find those joys and discover those successes and ultimately achieve any and all riches that you've defined for yourself. You deserve it. And it's about time that you get it for yourself. Would you agree? So let's discuss what we've gone over so far. In your rich plan, you already have your own definition of rich, definition of success, along with it, a goal, one goal that you can now focus on to do the work underneath it, to define it, to um, identify the tasks and the activities that need to go along with it. And that one goal along with the why you want to achieve it, the real why, the why thought, as I call it, and the value, the impact, the change it's going to have on your life, on your world, on you. And then you did define three things that you can start doing toward that goal, toward that why, toward that impact. And now you can even, as soon as this program is done today, start acting on them, no matter what they are. And I promise you, I guarantee you, you already have gained a degree of clarity, understanding, focus, energy, um, knowing that you can make a difference. You can start chipping away at what it is that you actually want. You can get yourself untrapped if that's what you're feeling. You can achieve and reach out for and ask and get those riches. So I wanted to provide you a few extra tips, as I promised I would, and they've been peppered in throughout um, the discussion today. Invest in a journal. Journals and writing and just purging the good, the bad, the you know, ugly that's going on in your life, it's a great tool for you to, to use on a daily basis, whether that's for your goal setting, your action planning, whether that's to really work through a problem or make it a hard decision or just share your experiences. Journaling is a wonderful tool for you to use. And then I want you to remove all distractions just like I asked you to do earlier. I want you to, at any time you're sitting down and wanting to complete a task or even initiate it, I want you to remove any distractions that will take away your focus or your ability to just get it done, as they say. And I want you to write down those goals, get them out of your head, get them on paper, think through them, get them specific, get them measurable, get them actionable, put a timeline to them, turn them away from dreams and into goals that you can actually pursue and achieve. And I discuss with my clients this a lot, both at work and at home. If you need a baseline of kind of how other people perceive you, and what they would tell you that you do really well, what you could continue to improve upon, or what they love about you, then initiate an assessment, whether formally at work or in your business or at home with your family and friends. I did it with my sisters and it was mind blowing. And it was transformational because all of a sudden I had some very direct, very frank and very loving feedback. Not all good, but, but truthful. And that's what you're always wanting to look for. And then treat your tasks like an appointment. Ladies, you know what's on your calendar. Business meetings, boss meetings, family meetings, children meetings, doctor appointments, hair appointments, 
if you want to accomplish anything and you want to also increase your productivity by hundreds of percent, and I'm serious about that, then treat your task like an appointment. A lot amount of time that it's gonna to take to complete that task, even if it flows over to multiple days, put an appointment on your calendar and keep it, okay? And then lastly, engage a champion of you. Someone who will hold you up as well as kick you in the butt when you need it. Someone to motivate you, to support you, to hold you accountable, and to tell you the truth about what it is uh, about maybe your pursuit of what it is you're working on. Engage a champion professionally or personally, family member or not, just make sure that they're a trusted advisor that you're willing to be very transparent with and that you're willing to uh, be guided by. Find someone, you deserve that. So my last question for you, through all of this, through creating your shift to rich plan, through your understanding of the pains and challenges women just like you are going through, is are you worth it? Do you really believe that you deserve to get untrapped, to achieve that, that rung on the corporate ladder, to break the glass ceiling, to, it, to build an enterprise of a business of, on your own, to meet the relationship or have the family that you want? If, that, if you do, then I definitely have an invitation for you. Now, it's not going to be for those who don't value themselves or don't think that they're worth it. And it's not going to be for those that won't invest in themselves, time, money, resources, opportunities. And it won't be for anyone who thinks they can do it on their own. I will wish you genuine luck. I will. I'll say good luck if you feel that you can do this journey on your own. And I would love to find out as you go through it, how you're doing and how you're progressing. And I hope it's well, but it will be for those who do want something new, different. They want to change. They want more. They want to shift. It is for someone who knows hope is definitely not a strategy to go by and that they need the support. They need the motivation. They need the accountability and they're willing to invest their time, their money, their resources, and even themselves. Because as you've discovered, it's not necessarily easy to go through discovering and confronting and shedding. We all would love to be creating and accelerating all the time. And therefore, you recognize that in order to be comfortable, in order to be rich, you need to get uncomfortable and you need to feel the pains and the joys in order to achieve what it is that you want. So if you're one of those individuals, one of those women, one of those professionals, one of those people that want a shift, then I would love, and I'd be so honored to be able to help you with your own detailed, very detailed rich plan that we would do in a 90 minute one-on-one -on -one strategy session where we're gonna dig into where you are today, where you wanna go and what it's gonna take to get you there. But you'll, you should book as soon as possible. As I mentioned, I do speak and train and coach in corporate and entrepreneurial organizations, have my individual clients as well as my groups, and yet I do have availability on my calendar, and I would love, love, love if you took one of those slots. In that session, actually it's a pre, during, and post, we're going to do an assessment, really get a good baseline of where you are. We'll do that before the call. And then on the call, we're going to drill into your goals, drill into the whys, drill into your limiting beliefs, drill into the mindset shifts you need to make, drill into the riches you want to achieve, come up with that 90-day execution plan, and then tailor time management, productivity, execution tips and tools for you personally because you operate in a way unique to other people. And as a result, I'll also provide you a 30-day post-call of which you'll touch base with me as to how you're doing, what challenges you're having, uh, what questions you might have, and where overall you are in your 90-day execution plan. And I'll share with you, give you a copy of my book, Shedding the Corporate Bitch. And we will have set up a private Facebook group for those of you who wanna collaborate, ask questions, and even network with other people within the program, but also with me. So as I say, you have this one life to live. It goes really, really fast. How do you want to spend it? And I hope it is to really get your rich plan, get your future defined and then executed on and achieved. 
So book now. It's an opportunity of a lifetime for you to look out for you and ob obtain and relish in what the world has to offer you. And I'll look forward to it. I'll look forward to partnering with you and supporting you and cheering you on. In the meantime, I want to thank you for being part of this program. And I'll look forward to helping you shift to riches. Thanks, everybody.